Hi, I'm Bruce Asher. In this video, I'm going to look at some of the wide range of MIDI editing features available in Cubase. So we have two tracks in the project window. And actually, the first thing I'm going to do here is try and improve the somewhat drab gray look I've got going. I'm going to start by coloring the events. So let's choose this color for this one. And also, I'll choose a different color for the other one. You can color events and you can color tracks. What I've done here is I've selected the track and then chosen the color and that means it will color all the events in there as well. This just makes it a lot easier to work out what's going on and where you are in the overall project. Now, MIDI can be accessed, can be recorded and edited in a whole load of different ways within Cubase. If I click on one of the MIDI events here and double click on it, it will open up the MIDI editor, the key editor. You can select different editors from this drop down window here the key editor, the score editor, for looking at something in a more traditional musical notation aspect. Open the drum editor, allows you to look at programming based on the drum hits rather than looking at lengths or anything like that. We also have a list editor, which allows you to actually look at the underlying data that has been recorded. So note values, their position, start and end points, the lengths and all kinds of other things as well. Let's go back to the key editor. And this is the way that you actually access the events based on a piano keyboard down the left hand side. And again, like um, many aspects of Cubase, there are lots of ways you can customize this view. If I click on this little button here, you'll see that I can change the way in which you can access controller data. So this is MIDI continuous data. So things like the modulation wheel or the pitch wheel, these two here. And this information can be recorded in and I can actually manipulate it. Of course, the simplest is the velocity. So how hard I press the keyboard. Once it's recorded in, I can change it by change scaling the values, doing interesting things there. I can even draw other values in. I can actually use this line tool to actually scale the values based on the line I'm putting in. You'll notice also that this relates to the events that are already there. But there's other things like pitch bend information, which I might record in. For example, if I record this track here, and I press record, and I record some pitch bend information, press stop, you'll see here that I've got this pitch information there. And I can draw this in myself, I can change those values. If I zoom in slightly here, You'll notice that what I see in that lower window is chosen, is actually selected here. Velocity and modulation, velocity and sustain pedal, pitch bend. I can show and hide the controller lanes. I can choose velocity only, which is probably the most common view. I can choose a whole load of other things, show used controllers, which is a great way of just seeing what I've actually recorded in there. Let's exit that and also exit this window here. I'm going to get rid of that pitch bend I put in there before. And a great way of accessing that is to use the undo tool. I'm using control Z. You can actually look in here. If you see uh, in this window, you can see you've got various options to actually allow you to actually undo the information. So undo edit controller. And also you can click on history, which gives you a full history of all the things that you've done. Cubase is very good allowing to see what you've actually done in the project and undoing aspects of that. So we're now back to where we started. Another way of accessing the MIDI information is to actually look at it in the lower zone. So if I click on this tool here, I've also got a key command that does this. I've set it up for F4. So if I press F4, you'll notice when I select that, it brings up MIDI information. This is quite interesting because it allows you to actually access the MIDI information within the MIDI parts, but also see what's going on within the project. So I can actually see the data here. If I click on another MIDI part, it'll immediately bring up the information there. So I can move between them quite easily. Let's close that down. Another way of accessing MIDI data and actually utilizing it within the project window is to use this so-called in-place editing. So we open the in-place editor and that's per track. There is also an icon that allows you to access this. You may need to add the icon from the settings, but it does allow you to immediately click on that and bring up what is the 
effectively the key editor within the project window. And you can do it for a whole bunch of tracks. You'll notice you still get the MIDI part underneath then you get the MIDI data above. Now, of course, if you add a load of these, it's gonna be pretty confusing. So as a rule, I tend to not use that. I might use the lower zone by pressing F4 and selecting the event, or I just double click on the event and bring up a separate window. So in this video, we looked at a number of different ways of accessing MIDI data within Cubase. We looked at editing from within the key editor, we looked at the other editors that are available, the drum editor and the score editor and how to access those. We looked at the lower zone and accessing data from there. And we also looked at in-place MIDI editing.